With my recent opportunity to play Homeworld 3, I was surprised at how many comments mentioned never having played the original game. It got me thinking about classic RTSs that are worth a look for those new to the genre. The ground rules for this list. The list is limited to games that still hold up, at least I think pretty well, even if one of them's a little hard to find these days. All right, so let's get started. First with the obvious ones, Man and Conquer in the Red Alert series. Don't look so surprised, Commander. The classics from the now defunct Westwood Studios, from Tiberian Sun all the way to Generals, I recommend trying them out. Honestly, getting started with the originals is super easy these days with the remaster release being a great starting point. The games hold up decently well, but if you're starting off with the very first Command & Conquer, you're gonna find that they're missing some of the more quality of life features of modern RTSs. And some of the old school mechanics may drive you batty like infantry getting run over by tanks you aren't microing. But it's totally worth it for the B-movie stories, the live action briefings, and the killer soundtrack. Two thousand and three's Rise of Nations and its expansion pack. I loved this game back in the day when it came out. It felt like the obvious continuation of game mechanics from titles like Age of Empires, Age of Empires Two, Empire Earth, and weirdly Civilization. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I always loved how the city and nation buildings worked in this one. Seeing your cities be connected by roads from traders and seeing your borders on your nations literally fight back and forth against the influence of other countries. It's a fun game with some surprising levels of detail for 2003. The units look great, the buildings are very detailed, and there are little bits like watching World War II era infantry set up sandbags if they stay long enough in a certain location, and it actually gives them defensive buffs. It's stuff like that I absolutely love. It even has a meta campaign mode that I must have missed back in 03. I guess they added that in the expansion. You can find Rise of Nations over on Steam these days fairly cheaply, and it still has an active modding community over on ModDB. Since we mentioned it, Age of Empires and Empire Earth. Age of Empires 1 and 2 are fantastic games, and Empire Earth is just sprawling through the timeline of humanity, all the way past it into like mechs and stuff. While I love these games, I do recommend checking them out for a little history lesson. My top is still Rise of Nations in this weird micro genre of classic RTSs, though Age of Empires 2 is a classic for a reason. The Homeworld series. It would be unforgivable not to add the Homeworld franchise in this list. That's how we started the video. Being one of my all time favorite games, even outside this genre, the entire series is S tier worth a checkout even more impressive than the fully 3D combat, which is still super unique in PC gaming, with only one game expanding on this style being Nebulous Fleet Command, which was released a couple of years ago by a small team. There aren't many others, but what's even more impressive than all of that is the fact that the presentation and story for Homeworld 1 meets and maybe even beats the gameplay. The remastered by Gearbox is definitely worthwhile, though they did make some changes. Check out Mandalore's video for deep dive details into those changes if you're interested, but I still recommend the remaster. Sadly, they left out the expansion for Homeworld 1 back in the day called Cataclysm, which is a horror RTS that somehow the team managed to pull off. You can find that over on GOG, and I recommend it. World in Conflict. We did a full Let's Play of this one just a couple of years ago. It's an alternate 1980s Cold War, and the war just got hot. A full invasion of a Seattle by the Russians, as you running an ad hoc defense with guard and army units, whatever you can muster to slow down the enemy's spearhead. After the initial release, an update came out adding the Russian perspective with its own campaign mixed in between the original one. For me, this broke up the original story in some really odd ways, but still. The music, the era representation, and one of the coolest mechanics ever, the way you call in assets, really sells the scale of the war and the vibe of the time. I can't help but smile calling in airstrikes, A-10 runs, naval bombardments, and the way you choose the units you're gonna fight with so you can help break through the enemy line, it's great. You'll get your orders shortly. Get us to the CP and step on it. Yes, sir. Supreme Commander. Talk about a series with a long pedigree. Starting way back in the 90s with Total Annihilation, Supreme Commander was the spiritual successor. It's just more and better. Subcom is all about scale. Massive armies of walkers and tanks and artillery clashing, 
huge amounts of resources, building up larger and larger forces as the game goes on, super weapons and mega units, artillery that can fire clear across the entire map. This is the game that I am terrible at due to the high level of multitasking, but it's never been such fun to be crap at it. The game had a number of successors like Planetary Annihilation, or the fan-made Beyond All Reason, which are fun, but the classic is a classic for a reason. Check out the fan-made community-driven project Forged Alliance Forever if you're interested in many quality of life updates, new maps, game modes, and even cooperative campaign for the title. Modders are so freaking cool, super easy to install as well. If we're talking RTSs, then we gotta talk about my favorite World War II one, Company of Heroes. There is, in my opinion, no RTS in the World War II genre that had a bigger impact that was nearly as strong as Company of Heroes. If good games come out swinging, this one came out with a, you know, nuke armed to its chest and a no shits given attitude. Oh, maybe this. What's that? Plutonium core, tritium shell. Does that translate? From detailed units, a unique squad-based cover system, destructible environments, vehicle weak points, armor bound system, suppression system, unique resources and map control setup, brought over from Dawn of War. The production and sound design is on point. This was without a doubt peak Relic RTS title, and they've been struggling to live up to it ever since. Sorry, Relic. I should take another swing at Company Heroes 3's campaign and see if they've worked out all the bugs yet. You can find the classic on Steam, as well as the third one, which has pretty mixed reviews. Overall though, Company of Heroes 1 and 2, definitely fun times. Sergeant Connie, ready? Yes, sir. Well, I mentioned it, Dawn of War from 2004. The start of the design for Company of Heroes can be seen in Dawn of War 1. While it lacks the cover system that we get to know in Company of Heroes and the destructible environments, you can't just take cover in craters your artillery made in this one, it makes up for all that by being the most heavily modded 40K title around. Also, it's 40K, meaning the factions each have a very unique flavor to them, style and campaign. With later expansions coming out with even more and more factions that you can play as, you end up with one of the most flushed out RTSs with the greatest variety ever. The Imperial Guard are still the best though, and I will fight you for the Emperor. Sins of a Solar Empire. You gotta say it just like the trailer guy. Anyone notice a trend that most of the games on this list have really decent modding support? Me neither. Sins of a Solar Empire took everyone by surprise on release. It had the scale of a 4X game, but it was real time. Like, it's hard to capture how major of a deal this was. Some of my fondest memories of LAN parties back in 08 was in this game. The base game is a fine mix of three factions, each unique with light RPG mechanics for the capital ships and a very cool way of dealing with building up to your unit cap, choosing when to research how many officers you have or your total fleet size means that it costs you more for the rest of the game to maintain that fleet. Meaning the bigger the army, the harder it is to support it. The real reason to get Sins though is for the mods. From Star Trek Armada 3 to Thrawn's Revenge, we've covered a massive number of them here on the channel. I recommend just looking up Sins on the XP Gamers and you'll see all the craziness. Most of them located over on ModDB. So yeah, go mod it. It's awesome. Stronghold. It's one of the most detailed castle simulators. And for some reason, I just love the campaign for the first one. Maybe it's because it's got characters like the rat and the wolf. Very subtle guys. It had some terrible re-releases and reworks, but if you're looking to make some interesting castles where you can watch a guy chop down a tree by a woodworker, hauled over and refined one board at a time, then have those boards sent to storage to be picked up by a Fletcher to get whittled into a single bow before dropped off at the armory so you can train a single archer, this is the kind of game for you. And you can see inside all their little buildings too. You can get Stronghold HD over on Steam for around five bucks, and it's a really good $5 to spend. Battlezone, the original game was in 1998 and they released a rework. It's a first person RTS. It's the only first person RTS on this list and one of the very few that are good. Battlezone is a series about driving vehicles, building a base and completing whatever your oddball objective was in the mission. It was a trip to be playing an RTS as a unit on the ground when this one dropped. With only a handful of games sort of like this, and most of them not very good, getting Biometal and leading the charge. It's been revamped for a Steam release with a fairly decent update graphically. The combat is intense, RTS, FPS, and uh, once again, I wish we had more of them, and we very much might. Looking at you, new guy. 
Medieval 2, Total War. If we're talking classic RTSs, then I am gonna throw the Total War series on here and I'm gonna bring up the one specific one I played the most of back in the day, Medieval 2, Total War. It set the stage for what I've been looking for in each edition of the franchise. And to be frank, I spent more time playing this game modded than not. The maps were bigger, we got general speeches at the beginning of battles, lots of campaigns to play as, hot seat multiplayer, and I think the graphic style holds up probably the best. So let's talk about, well, you guessed it, mods. Check out mods like the Third Age for a Lord of the Rings vibe, or the Elder Scrolls Total War mod if you ever wanted to take over Tamriel, play as the Nords and take the fight to the Empire. I'm a bit surprised that the definitive edition for this is still $25, so keep an eye out for a summer sale for this one. 25 seems a bit high for how old it is, but worth a look. Now for the game that I mentioned was kind of hard to find, Lord of the Rings, Battle for Middle-earth 1 and 2. Specifically 2 here. This one is a bit of a pain in the butt cheeks to find these days. Releasing in 2004, the original distributor lost the rights to the IP, meaning we can't have it on Steam or GOG. It's abandonware. And you can find it fairly guilt-free online, though there are some fan projects in the works to bring this baby back with a full overhaul, making it a modern RTS that looks really good. Check out the video I did on Reforged a few years ago. Project's still underway. Sadly, it's not done yet. Battle for Middle-earth had a unique base building system, all the main characters you'd expect to see in Lord of the Rings, a killer campaign, unique abilities and magic, strong multiplayer, and some of the most impressive overhaul mods that are still being worked on and still getting new releases. The best part of the base game was just how different the factions were. Not that like playing this while running Lord of the Rings on a side screen. All right, I feel like this video is gonna need two parts as the script has gone a bit long and I haven't even chunked my list yet. I had to shorten almost every one of these descriptions. Let me know what your favorite classic RTS is. Maybe I missed one and you can introduce me to a new game to play. I'd love that. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you next time. Because I am an American. What does an American want? Democracy? Capitalism! I want to sell out and settle down!